Hi guys and welcome to Prisoners of Hope. My name is Albina Chetty and thank you for joining me today as I encourage you to fight for your marriage as the Lord has asked me to fight for mine. And I hope that today's message would encourage you to continue to fight the good fight of faith no matter how the circumstance may look. And that's what uh, today's message is about. It's about your feelings during and you know the process of the separation or the divorce or finding out that he's having an affair or she's having an affair um what do you feel like and i want to explain to you and share with you my experience and i believe that i went through all the stages of grief uh, when my husband cheated on me and um you know they normally look at grief as the loss of a loved one through death but I promise you, those who are going through, you know, this crisis in the marriage right now can relate to what I'm about to share with you, that I did feel this way because I was grieving the loss of my marriage. My marriage to me seemed like it had failed. To the world, it seemed like it had failed. And these were the stages, I don't know in what order it comes into, but this was my story. So the first thing I had was depression. That was number one. I think I came into the marriage depressed. And I just got worse. And I wanted to be alone and I wanted to be isolated. I never wanted to go out with my husband. I pushed him away. Um, I was always sad. I was always crying. I was always thinking bad thoughts. And I was really depressed and I didn't notice it. I thought that, you know what, I just had this horrible life and that is why I'm so unhappy and um, when he left the depression got worse you know now it was lonely nights I couldn't sleep I couldn't eat um, I was crying at work I was crying everywhere I couldn't compose myself and, and no one around me could console me I had very few people in my life that actually stood with me uh, you know but most of them wanted us to get a divorce most of them were against the marriage right from the beginning and it was hard to find any hope where people would bring so much of judgment on us and I really did feel like a failure and I felt like the marriage is over and it felt like death entered my home so yes I was grieving during the season and um, after grieving and after he left you know not after grieving while I was still grieving you know when he used to come and visit me the next thing I felt was jealousy. So I started to bargain and I started to beg and plead and um, try to do things to please him, dress different, look different. I tried to seduce him. I tried to manipulate him, um, but it didn't work. I failed in all my attempts and he rejected me. And I knew he was rejecting me for another woman. And the moment he did that, um, then the suicidal thoughts and everything just kicked in. It was like it was activated. And how I responded next was to kill myself. I wanted to die. And that was the worst experience for me, for my family, because what happened next was my punishment. Because now he said to me, Oh, you are definitely unfit now. I have all uh, rights to take the kids away from you. You're crazy. He told everybody about what I did. That brought a lot of shame. I felt a lot of shame and I felt rejection. I felt unloved. I felt unworthy. I felt unwanted. I was lonely and the depression just got more severe. And even though I failed in the suicide attempt, you know, Everybody leaving me alone with my kids that night and knowing that people say they care but I really needed more and there was really so little people around me and they had their own families to go back to. So when I was alone I had to think about everything and when he rejected me and now that I'm alone and I knew that people didn't care, it made me angry. It made me angry that he was getting away with this. I wanted justice. I didn't want him to get away with this. So my anger disrespected my husband. I was always rude to him. I said mean things to him. I belittled him in many's business. I was rude to this woman. I was angry. I swore her. I wanted a fight with her. I went to her home. Um, you know, I found out where she works. So I tracked it down and the Lord told me that he would not be there for me if I would act on my anger. 
And you know, every time I would erupt in my emotions and, and I would go back to my pastor, he would always tell me more grace for you. And he would pray for me and you know, he told me to listen to his podcast. And the one podcast that stood out was Little Emotions because I felt like I had this deadly emotions that was taking over and I needed to be an overcomer in my emotions. I needed to be led by the spirit because the spirit is a good leader and the emotions will fail you. My heart will fail me. What I'm thinking is going to fail me. My thoughts is going to let me down. What others are saying about me, all these negative stuff, it's just, it's just bringing me more down, further, further into this pit. And, you know, after the Lord told me that he would not be there for me if I would act on my anger, because the Bible says, be angry and sin not. You know, I went to my pastor many times and I said, just pray away this anger. And, you know, he says, you can't do that because um, this is what the word of God says. But I can pray that, you know, that, you would, that God would help you, that you would get more grace for this. And I was like, I don't need more grace, you know, because I didn't understand. I said, I don't need more grace. I just need the prayers. Where's the prayers? In the name of Jesus, let my husband come home. You know, what's happening? What do I need to do? I'm fasting. I'm praying. Nothing's happening. I have faith. I'm saying these these Bible scriptures. I'm declaring it. I'm waking up in the midnight hour. You know, I'm raining havoc in the, in the enemy's camp. I'm doing everything. But I realized that all of that wasn't for my husband to come back home. You know, and after I failed in my anger, I needed to realize, Lord, what, what is it that you want? Why did you create me? You didn't create me to be such a mess, to be such a letdown, to be such a failure, to be a nothing. You know, I'm not a nothing. You don't make nothings. I know that you will do something with this. And I cried out to God and I said, please help me. And um, that's when I surrendered it. You know, after I evaluated the situation and I could see that I was failing in my own works, in my own strength, in my own efforts, I was getting nowhere. This man was still rejecting me now. I was making a bigger mock out of myself, out of everything. And I was getting more hurt. I was getting more bruised. I mean, this betrayal was ruining me. It was destroying me. I, I felt lost. I felt hopeless. Uh, I was now on antidepressants. And even though that antidepressants was not helping me, it could not give me the peace I wanted. It could not give me the joy I wanted. And as I went to the Lord in my surrendering all my pain to him, he says, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And in your marriage, he came to steal your joy, to steal your peace. And that's what I felt because I tried to get peace by taking these antidepressants and calming myself down, but I couldn't. It didn't work for me. In fact, it made me like more sick. It made me miserable. I couldn't concentrate. I was drowsy. Um, I was nauseous. And it didn't help me to sleep at night. You know, I was wide awake, thinking thoughts that I shouldn't be thinking. Instead of praying, instead of trusting God, instead of thanking God, I could not be grateful. I, I could not be content. I found everything to be angry about, you know. And that's when I had to, the next thing, number six, was to forgive and to accept my situation, to forgive my husband, to forgive this woman, to forgive myself, to go back to God and just accept the situation that He knows best for my life. And when I did that, um, I trusted the process. I trusted the process that Jesus Christ was more than enough. And then it came to the last one, which was seven, which was rebuilding myself again. Because I know I'm made in the image, the image of God, and not in the image and the product of who I was walking in because of my husband and because of how men were in my past or, you know, how I was raised and what I knew about a man. Uh, and I always assumed for them to get it wrong, that, that, that they would always hurt you. But the Lord showed me that as I started to rebuild myself in hope, I realized that even if my husband doesn't come back home, that Jesus Christ was more than enough for me. Because every time I cried out to him and I failed, he told me that his grace was sufficient. And I kept on blacking that out because I wanted to hear something out, something else. But I want to tell you something, guys, today. When you're struggling in your area of grief, in your season of grief, if you're grieving for your spouse who has abandoned you, who has rejected you, and now you are drowning in shame and rejection and loneliness, I want you to replace that word grief with grace because God's grace is is sufficient when I asked him to please do things quickly and suddenly and take this pain away from me he didn't he let me go through the process the same process that you are going to be going through right now it's the time of waiting 
You know, you need to be still and know that He is God. And you need to pray for their salvation. You need to pray for, for God to open up your eyes so that you will walk accordingly, so you will do accordingly because there were so many things I did wrong. Even though I was fasting and praying, I failed in that area. You know, my fasting, my that couldn't bring my husband home. It didn't bring my husband home. The love, the, the compassion, what brought my husband home was grace. What saved me and my husband was grace. What saved my marriage and reconciled us and restored us back together was grace. What helped me with my faith was more grace. I needed more grace so that my faith could grow, so I could endure. I needed more grace to go back to the Word and say, let me try again. So guys, when you are going through this right now, I just hope that God's grace overflows your situation that he covers you in every area that you're facing right now in your marriage that god's grace is sufficient enough to take you through another night take you through another day remember that he will never leave you or forsake you the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy he came to steal my peace he came to steal my joy he came to kill me on the inside to, to take away everything to destroy my purpose and my plan because remember he's also got a purpose in his plan and his purpose and plan is to kill steal and destroy and i needed to find out what was my purpose and plan you know i've also got a purpose and a plan and god's purpose and plan is not for divorce so therefore his grace covered me because even when I didn't deserve it, when Satan accused me and said I was a bad wife, God's grace covered me. And he told me he would give me another chance. But this time I had to do it right. I had to learn from my mistakes. I had to deal with myself. I had to love myself again. And I had to learn how to love my husband, respect my husband. And I had to learn that grace is sufficient in all things. Guys, until next time, I pray that you will be in that waiting season with grace and that you'll be confident in faith, hoping and believing that God is for you and not against you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. It doesn't matter what the enemy is saying. It doesn't matter about the lies. He spoke a lot of lies about me. He said I should kill myself. Yeah, I am still today. And God has covered me. He has preserved my life. I'm still alive because he wanted more for me. He wants more for you guys. He wants more for marriage. The Bible says, after the devil comes to steal and kill, the next verse says, but Jesus comes to give life and to give life abundantly. May you receive that life today because my marriage was dead so I said Lord come and raise my dead Lazarus, Lazarus marriage may God begin to raise up everything dead in your marriage today because we serve a God who is alive a resurrecting God that is the king we serve guys be blessed until next time